One in four people on Ozempic lose almost no weight. And if you're one of them, this isn't your fault. I'm about to show you exactly why. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Welcome back to the channel. Today, you're going to learn why 25% of patients see minimal results on GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Vicovi, Manjaro, Zepbound, and most importantly, what you can actually do about it. Now, whether you're a patient frustrated by the scale or a provider trying to help your patients, this video will give you the answer. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I share evidence-based obesity and kidney health content every single week. So let's dive in. Here's what we're going to cover. First, the surprising data on non-responders. Then, the four obesity phenotypes that explain the why, the genetics that predict your response, and finally, your step-by-step -step action plan. And stay tuned, what I'm about to share at the four-minute mark about the four obesity phenotypes completely changed how I treat non-responders. This one insight could be the breakthrough you need. Now, here's something that might surprise you. Four people taking drugs like Ozempic or Vico see minimal or no weight loss. We're talking less than 5% of their body weight even after three full months. And this isn't because they're doing something wrong. Let me show you the data. In the landmark SELECT trial that was published in Nature Medicine, the average weight loss was about 10.2% at week 208. That compared to only 1.5% for the placebo group. Now, this sounds great, right? But here's what the average hides. Massive individual variation. Some people, they lost 20, 25, even 30% of their body weight. Others, they lost less than 5%. And we know that 5% is the threshold where we start to see real metabolic improvements. Better blood pressure, better blood sugar, reduced inflammation, improved kidney function. So if you're below that threshold, you're not getting the full benefit. Real-world data confirms this pattern. Up to 23 to 25% of individuals on GLP-1 receptor agonists are classified as non-responders at the three-month mark. Drop a one in the comments if you've experienced minimal weight loss on these medications or a two if you haven't tried them yet. I'm curious to see how common this really is in all of my YouTube listeners. Let's talk about why GLP-1s work and why they don't. To understand why some people don't respond, we first need to understand how these drugs work and when they do work. GLP-1 receptor agonists, they work through multiple pathways, both in your brain and in your digestive system. The way they work is they slow down how fast your stomach empties, so you feel full longer after eating. And they also act on the hypothalamus, the appetite control center in your brain, reducing those constant hunger signals. And they may even slightly increase how many calories you burn at rest. But here's the key insight. If your obesity is driven primarily by one pathway and the medication targets a different pathway, you're not going to see great results. For example, if your hunger is driven by your brain's reward system and the medication mostly works on gut fullness, the match isn't right. And this is where phenotypes come in. Let's talk about the four phenotypes, your obesity blueprint. This is the game changer that most doctors don't talk about. Stay with me. What I'm about to share changed how I approach non-responders in my own practice. Researchers at Mayo Clinic identified four distinct phenotypes. The hungry brain, hungry gut, emotional hunger, and slow burn. Let me break these down. First, the hungry brain. This means you need high caloric intake just to feel satisfied. Your brain's satiety signals don't work well, and you can eat a full meal and still feel like you could keep going. This is driven by neural signaling and reward pathways in your brain. Number two is the hungry gut. This means you feel full initially, but hunger returns very quickly. Your stomach empties fast, and gut satiety hormones don't last long. This is about your digestive system, not your brain. Number three is emotional hunger. 
means eating is driven by stress, mood, or external cues and not physical hunger. And finally, slow burn means you have low energy expenditure. Your metabolism runs slower than average. Here's where it gets really interesting. In phenotype-guided studies with liraglutide, that's Saxenda, an older GLP-1 drug, participants with the hungry gut phenotype, they lost an average of 6.4% body weight. But those with the hungry brain phenotype only lost 3.3% of body weight. That's almost half the response. Another study of 717 adults found massive variation in calories needed to feel full. Some people felt satisfied at 140 calories, while others needed over 2,000 calories to reach the same level of foot fullness. Which phenotype sounds most like you? Type in one for hungry brain, two for hungry gut, three for emotional hunger, or four for slow burn. I'm tracking these results and want to see this distribution to better create content specific for you. Now, the genetics that predict your response, phenotypes explain a lot, but genetics might predict even more. Recent research has identified a gene called NBEA, neurobechin, that's associated with response to liraglutide specifically. Individuals with certain NBEA genetic variants were 50% more likely to not lose significant weight on liraglutide. Conversely, those with a responsive genetic score were 82% more likely to achieve substantial weight loss. That's a huge difference. Now, this hasn't been validated for semaglutide yet, the newer drugs like Ozempic and Vigovi. This is a research signal, not something we use to decide treatment today, but it points us in the right direction. Now, here's where it gets controversial. Should genetic testing dictate treatment? I'll tell you what I think in a moment, but first, let me show you the reality check. There's a large study of almost 11,000 individuals across multiple ancestry groups. They found no significant associations between common polygenic scores for BMI or diabetes, and GLP-1 weight loss outcomes. Genetics are promising, but not definitive yet. Many other factors matter. Your behavior, your environment, your medication dose and tolerance, your other health conditions. Here's a question. Would you want genetic testing to predict your response before starting medications? Pop it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think about it. Okay, so let's talk about your three-phase action plan. And this is where it gets practical. I'm going to give you the exact protocol I use with patients in this situation. Now, whether you're a provider or a patient, this is your actionable roadmap. Let me break it down into three phases. Phase one is confirm if you're a true non-responder. First, we need to rule out the simple stuff. Make sure you've been at target dose or maximum tolerated dose for at least 12 weeks before judging a response. GLP-1s, as you know, require slow titration. You might not be at an effective dose yet. Number two is confirm your adherence. Are you taking it on schedule? Are you storing it correctly? Are you using proper injection technique? Check for side effects that might be limiting dose escalation, nausea, vomiting diarrhea, constipation. These can prevent reaching an effective dose. And then you want to evaluate for secondary causes. For example, hypothyroidism slows metabolism. Untreated sleep apnea sabotages your weight loss. And this is one of those major conditions that gets missed. If you have sleep apnea, treat it first. And if you have kidney disease, like many of my patients do, untreated sleep apnea accelerates both kidney decline and weight loss resistance. And then certain medications, they cause weight gain. For example, insulin, some diabetes medications like sulfonylureas, certain antidepressants, antipsychotics. If you have chronic kidney disease, we need to account for fluid retention as well because that can mask fat loss on the scale. Once you've ruled 
all of this out, then we move to phase two. And phase two is identifying your phenotype. So ask yourself these questions. Do you feel full soon after a meal, but get hungry again quickly? That's hungry gut. Or do you need very large portions and still feel unsatisfied? That's hungry brain. Is your eating driven by stress, emotions, boredom, rather than physical hunger? That's emotional hunger. And finally, do you have low energy, low muscle mass, and feel like your metabolism is sluggish? That's the slow burn. Now, some clinics offer phenotype testing, combining physiologic assessments with questionnaires to identify your dominant driver. Once you know your phenotype, you can match your strategy. Phase three is adjust your strategy. If you're an ozempic non-responder with hungry gut phenotype, GLP-1 medications are still a good choice because they target the gut satiety directly, but you want to optimize your meals. High protein, 25 to 30 grams per meal. High fiber, non-starchy vegetables, low glycemic carbs. Eat slowly because these strategies enhance the drug's effect. If you're a hungry brain, you need a different approach. GLP-1s may not be enough alone. Consider adding medications that have a stronger central appetite suppression, like fentramine, topiramate, or use combination therapy of GLP-1 plus GIP agonists like Zepbound, Manjaro, Mayo Clinic data shows better results with brain acting agents in this phenotype. You'll also need behavioral support, addressing food reward and cravings the way we address other addictions. And if you're an emotional hunger person, medications alone won't fix this. You're going to need parallel intervention. For example, cognitive behavioral therapy, stress management, yoga, meditation, addressing trauma, depression, mindfulness practices. And if you're the slow burn type, focus on building muscle mass, resistance training two to three times per week, optimize your thyroid, adrenal, and sleep function. GLP ones can still help, but you need to raise your resting metabolic rate through lifestyle changes. Across all phenotypes, there are universal optimizations. Sleep, the target, seven plus hours. Untreated sleep apnea kills your weight loss response. Stress, chronic stress elevates cortisol, which promotes fat storage. Hydration, especially if you have kidney disease, proper fluid balance matters. You have to monitor tolerance, slowly titrate your dose, manage side effects, and stick to it. And here's something crucial for my kidney patients. Even if weight loss is modest, GLP-1 medications may still provide significant kidney and heart protection. If your blood pressure is improving, your kidney markers are better, your blood sugar is more stable. Don't stop the medication just because the scale isn't moving as fast as you hoped. The benefits go much further than the number on the scale. And if after three to six months, you're still under 5% weight loss, consider therapy escalation. Go to a higher dose. Add a second agent, for example, GLP-1 plus GIP agonist, or GLP-1 plus a central appetite modulator like fentramine. And of course, consider bariatric surgery referral if your BMI and comorbidities qualify. Or, in some cases, switch medication classes entirely, especially if you have a hungry brain phenotype and GLP-1 alone isn't cutting it. Here's the bottom line. Obesity is not one disease. And GLP-1 medications, like Ozempic, are not one size fits all. By understanding your phenotype, by recognizing the role of genetics, by optimizing lifestyle and co-therapies, and by being willing to adjust your approach, we move towards precision obesity medicine. And if you're a doctor watching this, start asking phenotype screening questions. Consider physiologic or genetic testing and tailor your therapy accordingly. If you're a patient, don't assume non-response is your fault. 
Ask your provider about your phenotype. Ask if your strategy should be refined. Remember, lifestyle still matters. Medication enhances the biology, but you still have control. Now, quick re- reminder, this information is for educational purposes only. You have to talk to your doctor before making changes to your treatment plan. But if this video helped you understand why some people don't respond to GLP-1 medications, please hit that like button, subscribe for weekly evidence-based content on nutrition, weight loss, kidney health, longevity, and share this with someone who's frustrated by minimal weight loss. It could transform their approach. I want to end this video, as always, by reminding you, don't forget to practice gratitude and kindness, especially for others and for yourself by taking care of your health. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of your kidneys. Take care of your metabolism, your health. And I'll see everyone next time.